Hello, my name is Curtis Sluz, CEO and co-founder of Brightlamp. Where affordable healthcare is our business, medically mobile, that's our mission. Now, I'm a machine learning engineer who first encountered machine learning while I was in college, classifying cancerous proteins to determine whether or not somebody had breast cancer. I thought to myself, how astounding how we could essentially fit hundreds of years of doctor expertise into just a few second tests. We wanted to move this platform and begin merging advanced medical diagnostics onto our mobile platform. But I wanted to start with a project that was the main driver in why I chose a career in combining medicine with software. My cousin suffers from severe head trauma due to multiple impacts. And I think to myself often, what could have been different if we had known sooner so he could have gotten the healthcare that he needed earlier on? And with advancements in mobile technology, we can now finally do this. Our system utilizes a never-before-seen computer vision algorithm that operates statistically. It then feeds that data in from your iris's response due to a light stimulus. We push that data into a neural network where it can then classify whether or not you have head trauma. This is truly, this will be the first mobile application that can diagnose you. And with our AI implementation and reinforcement learning methods, each successive test is only going to make the algorithm more robust. Now, experts are extremely excited about how to utilize this breakthrough technology. It's backed by board-certified doctors and two university head trauma specialists. And it's absolutely HIPAA compliant. So let's move into the demo. Imagine that you're a high school football coach and your star running back just got creamed on the field. You want to make sure he's okay, so you pull him off onto the sideline, have him move his helmet, and you hold the phone up to his eye. Now, we will automatically recognize whether or not eyes in the viewfinder, so you have to think about initiating the test, it'll trigger the flash, and in five seconds worth of recording, you have all of the data that you need. Here's a visualization about how the algorithm works. We are not hindered by feature detection and edge detection methods that you see today. Since it is completely statistical, the color of the iris does not matter, and we account for motion in the camera as well. So as you can see, we get great response. So let's move back to the slides. Now remember the kid that got pulled off onto the sidelines? Well, it turns out that even though he was showing no signs or symptoms of a concussion, it turns out he does in fact have one, and going back into play would have been detrimental to his health. We see this exact scenario playing out exceeding number of times in the United States today, and 84% of the time, that individual would have returned to play. And there are 36 million children playing in organized sports this year alone, and they suffer from a convenience issue to convenient testing methods. Sway Medical's balance test requires you to stand on one foot for at least five minutes. An impacts questionnaire system is, offers up qualitative results and takes at least 25 minutes, and nobody has time for that. Our test can truly be administered anywhere, at any time, and is 60 times faster than the next fastest test. Now, we are truly democratizing healthcare, and at 99 cents per test, we are setting a precedent for affordable diagnostic services. And for institutions that want to utilize this product thousands and thousands of times each year, we have an unlimited subscription model at $99 per month for unlimited testing and an unlimited number of profiles. It comes with a complete dashboard and data management system so you can keep better track of your player's health. Now, implementation of our system is bound to be as rapid as the test itself with three high schools, one university, and one hospital already on board for phase one testing. And I am extremely excited to tell you that we've partnered with a notable major league baseball team. So we begin testing our methodology on high performance athletes. There's so much information to be gained from just a few second tests, and we are only getting started. Our IP covers a breadth of diagnostic services ranging from motor neural diseases and detection of autism at infancy. And furthermore, we can move towards detecting drugs and intoxication. We are now one step closer to a total automated mobile healthcare platform. Medically mobile, that's our mission. Thank you.
Mm. Wow, finish with a minute that's fair. Uh, Krishna, since you are a physician, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you want to start us off? Yeah. Great job, guys. I thought that was a great presentation uh, and obviously a very important area. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the plan to publish any of this, just in peer-reviewed? Because I haven't, I followed the space closely, but I haven't seen this exact test before. So yeah, so we're Purdue University-based, and we have strong ties um, with two individuals, would be Pablo Vlagos over there, and Dr. Eric Nauman, who is renowned in head trauma research. So we do have pipelines uh, in place for publishing research that uh, we will have going on uh, later by the end of the summer. By the uh, end of the summer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about the false positives and false negatives that you've had so far. Right, so this system has not been deployed out on the field yet because we're importing, reporting our computer vision system onto the phone at the moment. However, uh, with the research, which has been extensively studied in pupillometry, uh, we see that the false positive rate is very good um, and accuracy, even though single variate at the moment, um, we can reach greater than 90% with our multivariate stats. I have two questions. Um, how much data did you have to train your models? And so, and then secondly, would it be more impactful if I took a scan of my own eye, kind of personalized when I'm normal, and then taking it again when I have a concussion or something? Does right. that improve the accuracy as well? So let me start with your second question first. Right now it's an administered test. So you sit somebody down and you administer the test, uh, mainly because you need the flash of the phone. Okay. So uh, that's a little bit of a limitation on the application of cells. But however, we're looking into front-facing detection as well, so you can administer the test yourself. And then for our, our neural network, um, we pulled in data from journal articles and dumped it into a neural network and trained it. Um, and that is about 80 test cases, which is not very much at all, but we still get a clear separation by limiting the number of neurons that we have in the And too, I think your question was asking about if you need a baseline first against, yeah. uh, that won't be necessary with uh, the machine learning that we're gonna be implementing. It will be able to detect whether or not uh, you fall outside the normal basis. Yeah. yeah, it's a physiological response, so it's pretty baseline across the human population. But it sounds like part of your challenge though is getting as much data samples as possible. Cle clearly, if you had 100,000 test cases, your system would be more accurate. Absolutely. Correct, and we yeah. have a pipeline to get through that. Um, we are part with the three high schools we're partnered with. Uh, each successive test is going to have fMRI data to back up every single test we do. Awesome. How do, you, how do you think about turning this into a big business? I don't know how many concussions there are in the U.S. per year, but or how many potential concussions there are per year that you're testing for, but at 99 cents per test, there's 30 million concussion tests a year, that's a $30 million business of 100%. Yeah. How, do, how should I think about the numbers to build a big business here? Good question. So there's actually about 3.8 million concussions that are reported every year. Um, and like I said before, the current estimated rates, actually about 84% of those go undiagnosed because they're mainly asymptomatic or very mild, so you don't recall or see what the symptoms are. Um, now, we're actually consumer-facing, so we're going to be targeting more uh, soccer moms and soccer dads as well. So don't think more about the business side because it is one of our smaller markets, but consumer side, um, there's you know, 31 million families with children. And two, the idea is that the, the same technology that we're using to diagnose if someone is concussed, you can use, as we said, for other applications such as with alcohol or um, Drugs, motor neural diseases. Yeah. So, so that's actually, I, I, I give you a big thumbs up because um, I think this is a huge market, actually, a youth sport, and especially the, the technology part within the youth sport market is, is growing. Consumer, I don't know, I, would, I, I feel you've hit it on, on, uh, on everything I was wondering. I, I love that you already thought about the future applications. Um, and I think you need a little bit of um, Silicon Valley or, 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 or East Coast Silicon Valley, <laughs> or any Silicon Valley input um, to help you and uh, where Indiegogo failed, for example. Sure. <laughs> and so uh, if you want to join AngelPad and you're interested in AngelPad, I think uh, we should talk. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Open to it. Really, I do think it's compelling yeah. when we go and yes. talk to these consumers about concussions. It's. I, I think so, but I think there's also a, a, sure, there, a yeah. huge market with, with leagues. and Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully so. tell them to increase the price. More yes, than there's work to do. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I think you have a great, great... One, Promises, good presentation, smart team. 
Yeah, we uh, do good work. <laughs> one point to keep in mind, though, is that we can also track recovery. So um, even if somebody were to get diagnosed at a hospital, you can utilize the application multiple times yes. to make sure that you're th right. tracked correctly. Yes. I'm curious because you mentioned that the B2B play is somewhat smaller, and I, I actually see the money there. Yeah. And I can see in terms of like all the lawyers, et cetera, if, like you minimize the liabilities of actually someone getting seriously injured. And especially if someone's not actually going to stop like the football, even though like there's so many movies that they should stop, right? Mm -hmm. So why is that something that you're hesitating on in terms of really moving forward? It's not necessarily a hesitation, but um, it's obviously a limited number of markets. So if you think that there's 14,500 uh, high school football teams in the nation. Um, well, I'm thinking and, globally. Yeah, and globally, we, uh, we, I mean, we will roll out globally. Um, we filed our ICP or PCT application for international filing, so yeah, um, yeah we're, we're working towards that route. I did have a question. Um, people usually have concussions. They kind of need your app when they need it. And if you could find a way to get some type of recurring revenue model and maybe save it for 12 months and kind of continually scan, I think that's the challenge. It costs so much to market and get these people on board and to find some recurring hook I think will be uh, very interesting. I mean, I've had a few concussions myself. I mm. probably could have used this a long time ago. I'd probably, a lot. I'd probably be much smarter now than, you know. <laughs> I'm just Can thinking in terms of EMT. Of you know, like if you go to like that direct point, then you can actually create so many efficiencies in the triage. And yep. so I'm Possibilities excited. are limitless. Yeah. 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 So, so I, I hear the opportunity around uh, head injury and maybe alcohol. Uh, you can kind of see it. I'm, I'm a little more skeptical around some of the other opportunities you're talking about, like autism, for instance, and, and some of these seem a little bit more far-fetched. You know, what do you think after this and maybe uh, alcohol, like what do you think the next thing is? Answer as quickly as possible. Yeah. Uh, we're going to move into the uh, early detection of autism in infancy. There's actually a lot of research that's come out recently out of Harvard that we're looking into right now. Mm. All right, give it up for Bright Lamb. Thank you.